Okay, welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we added a coastline layer that includes the entire world. Um, and then we imported uh, a historical map from the David Rumsey collection using um, these layers here. And then we geo-referenced or geo-rectified or warped or rubber sheeted, uh, as it's variously called, um, this map using the georeferencer tool uh, provided by uh, QGIS. Um, in this particular case, our map had grid lines so that we could easily just input those points directly uh, in the georeferencer using the grid lines. Uh, but if you had imported a map that doesn't have grid lines, uh, you could indicate points uh, on the map for a village, uh, a mountain, uh, a particular part of the coastline um, that has a known uh, uh, latitude and longitude. Um, the georeferencer did a pretty good job putting the map in the right place. Uh, we noticed that the coastline uh, for our uh, vector file is different than the one provided by the historical map. Um, for those of you who are looking closely, you'll have noticed that there were other differences as well. Uh, the coastline is different here, it's different there, um, and it's not a proper fit here. Um, in the case of this big uh, extended area here, I'm guessing that the difference here is one uh, of uh, historical coastline versus our own. <coughs> However, zooming in on this area here, um, because of the similarity in the shape of the coastline uh, with the vector file, what I'm seeing is rather than a difference in historical time periods, is I think that the, the georectification wasn't exact. Uh, and that was a result of us only choosing a few points. Um, if you see that this happens with your map and you want to get nice accuracy, then um, if this kind of result uh, uh, happens, uh, go back and redo the georectification of the map with more points or with other transformation uh, methods uh, such as those that you find in uh, this list here uh, and so on. Experiment uh, with the georeferencing in order to get as close a match uh, as possible um, for your particular map. Uh, not all maps will end up working in the end. Uh, it all depends on how accurate you actually need it to be. Okay, uh, the main task for this video is what do we want to do if we want to change this vector uh, coastline file uh, to show the coastline from this early period? To do this, we select the layer that we want to edit, uh, click on this toggle editing button, and you'll see here there's a number of things you can do. You can add line features, or you can use this vertex tool, which is what we're going to do. When you choose the vertex tool, overlaying the mouse uh, on the line will allow you to select a node or select a midpoint between two nodes and edit the actual coastline. So in this particular case, I'm going to click and let go and click again to move the coastline slightly at this point. Now, uh, on your own map, you'll want to spend some time and do this properly, but I just want to show you roughly how you might want to do this. You can also click and press backspace uh, or delete, and that will actually delete a node, which is what you might want to do in some cases. Click and delete the node, click and delete the node. Uh, in other cases, you want to click and move the node to a particular place. I want to click and delete this node. I'm going to delete that one. Click and delete this one. Click and I'm going to move that over here. Over here, I'm going to delete this node. In. And then if you want to add a new node, click on this plus sign and it'll generate a new node for you click and delete, and so on. Oops, I, uh, you can undo. In this case, I'm not even bothering to move these, these nodes. 
I'm just clicking and deleting them. And uh, again, in your case, you may want to do this with a much higher degree of, of, of accuracy. Uh, but for this particular exercise, let's just do a very rough job to remove this coastline from our own period. And uh, go through and fix these final couple points here. Okay, when you're done, you can toggle editing again and save the changes that you made to the layer. Scrolling out again, you'll see now that uh, the vector layer, which keep in mind is the coastline for the entire world, has now been modified uh, to match this historical map. Uh, you can also do this uh, to add new things uh, to your map. Uh, we could do this by editing and then adding a line feature uh, to provide us with the provincial borders of Shandong as of 1917, which are very, very different than they are today in the 21st century. You could use it to add uh, this uh, German controlled and later Japanese controlled by 1917, or the British uh, controlled area of Weihai uh, on the map here. Uh, but rather than adding it to the coastline, okay, sorry, instead of adding a new vector layer in this menu, if you click on the new shape file and give a name and a location to your shape file, and I'm going to put it in the same folder as all the others. I'm going to call this the uh, Shandong province border. It's going to be, in my case, a line vector. I'm going to keep it in WGS84. And because I'm not using this to store any particular kinds of information, uh, I'm not going to add any fields uh, for this vector layer. Uh, if I was to do polygons, then I could uh, draw the entire province of Shandong. Uh, in this particular example, I'm just going to make a single line uh, that connects one area of the coastline to another. So now I have a new provincial border. I'm going to give it uh, the same kind of look as our uh, coastline. Uh, and I'm going to add this as a new... If you put your mouse over here, you can see Add a Line Feature. Then you're given this uh, kind of tool right here. It's a bit finicky to work with. Um, you'll see that when you click on it, the um, red line shows up uh, somewhere other than the center point. Again, I'm assuming that this is a bug. Uh, but if you zoom in close enough, it doesn't make much of a difference anyways. My suggestion would be, instead of using this finicky tool uh, at the micro level, is to generate the general kind of coastline and then go in and use the node or the vertex tool uh, to fix it. So I'm just going to make a very simple approximation of the border, like so. When you're done, you right click and you give it an ID if you want. And now we have a rough uh, approximation of the Shandong coast. Uh, now we can go back and use the vertex tool and uh, add, oops, and use the same process that we did before to give us uh, a much more accurate and uh, carefully shaped uh, coastline. I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but you get the idea. So uh, once you've added this, 
and have it looking just the way you want to, uh, then you just save your changes and um, you have yourself now you've geo-referenced other objects uh, using the historical map. You can bring some of those objects uh, that you see on your historical map. It doesn't have to be at this uh, small scale. It could be at the large scale, uh, at the sub-city level, for example, if you are uh, geo-referencing buildings uh, or other objects uh, onto the map. You can draw onto the map uh, through the creation of new shape files uh, and uh, the vertex tool.